Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for TreeStuff.com, and I'm here with Eleanor. <laughs> that was our That's third. Me. That was our third take. Look, this is Adelwood's 3D printing lab. Awesome. Let's take a look. Elena, tell me what all these machines are doing. They are all 3D printers. We have four 3D printers in here. One, these two oranges one, and the big microwave behind there. And mainly those machines are helping us to uh, prototype pieces and find out about shapes and details before we get into toolings and in production. Of course, those are all polymers machines, so we can't prototype anything out of metal in this little room. But the idea is that anyway we can check together shapes, that the pieces are going along together, they're fitting, that they are good to be held in hand. And then we can go on with uh, further prototype, metal prototypes and production. I have a filament deposit uh, printer. Mm -hmm. What is that? That's what this is. Correct. So we're using plastic filament here. What are some of the other printers? This one looks different. Can you explain the orange one to me? Yes, those two are similar, are quite similar to each other. They are both resin printers, uh, which means there is a bath of resin underneath, which is a liquid monomer. And then there is a, uh, a strong light underneath. That's the easy way. A that strong is, light. <laughs> a strong light, the UV light or a very strong uh, light beam. And basically the, um, the bottom of this resin tank is transparent, so the light can get through and can polymerize the lower layer of polymer, of monomer. And, and then it, the platform, it slowly, it slowly, slowly, slowly moves upward. And by moving upward, it gets little by little all these layers of polymerized, of, exactly, of polymerized material. And the good things of those printers is that the resolution is so much higher than this one. So you don't see all the little lines that right. this normal printer have. Can we take a look at these parts? They look like Certainly. they're finished. Yes. Well, almost. Um, you can come in here. So this, for instance, I'll need gloves because it gets very sticky. You see the things are actually printed the other way around compared to a filament printer. The filament printer goes from bottom up. And this resin that goes from up, they pull the thing out really of the tank. And in this case, we have a carabiner there. It's not totally ready. <laughs> we have a, uh, <laughs> oh, there's a unicorn here. <laughs> we have it under control in here. It's all okay. It's all okay. Just ignore him. No, no, no one else is seeing him actually. He's not there. <laughs> it looks like this. So it's not exactly ready yet. What we need to do now is that we need to remove it from the support. And then at this point, it needs to be washed because it's still, you see, it's quite sticky. And after it's washed in an um, alcoholic solution, actually, it gets into a further round of UV light all around. So or everything that is not totally polymerized, it will get polymerized and hard. And you see the resolution of this stuff. You really don't see all the little lines that you would have on a filament printer. Before you uh, had this 3D printing lab, how was this type of prototyping done? <laughs> With a lot of patience in, in the workshop, basically. Were Means you making the models out of clay or wood or sending them off for CNC? They were different stages. So in the last years, there before we could have a 3D printer in-house, there were already some companies that were offering 3D printing services. So we were sending the pieces out, but of course it was very expensive and it was time consuming. Right. So there, was, there were some years like this. So before this time, uh, we were doing a lot of, spending a lot of time in the workshop basically. Means uh, making prototype out of plastic and either drilling them or cutting them by hand, a lot of sandpaper, a lot of Dremel work. So it was just more time consuming. But it's still what we are doing nowadays for quite some metal pieces. I mean, we can still uh, CNC cut metal pieces, but it takes time to, to make the 3D and, and send them for CNC cutting and then take them back. So sometimes we just, for the easy pieces, we do them by hand. Interesting. What is this part behind you? This looks very complex. What, <laughs> what are we looking at here? This failed. It failed? <laughs> it's just to say, we are not yet on a level where um, we could just push the button and then get things out. So it, it works quite all right, but it's not like this 100% yet. So sometimes the prints fail, especially this printer has um, the capacity of printing soft material. So, ah, that's still sticky, sorry. Wow, is this like the last <laughs> for still, a shoe? 
yeah, it's kind of a piece of a shoe. So this is still soft and it's something that the other printers can't do. Um, but as well, printing soft material, it's a bit borderline. So is sometimes this a TPU the print material? No, um, they are not TPU because TPU are thermopolymers. Um, Which are heat. Yeah, they, the they are formed like you can heat them and melt them. And then and those are different. Those are stuff that have some um, chemical additive in order to react with UV light. So that's not the family of TPU. They can behave sometimes similarly. Interesting. Uh, but that's not TPU. I print with TPU at home. I can tell. Uh, TPU, you're you can, yeah, sorry, you can print with, with this with actually. This. But then again, the quality is quite. Yeah, it depends which shape you're making, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Or if the shape goes like this or like this. Yeah. Um, I can tell you're really passionate about this. How long have you worked here at Edelroot? Oh, uh, nine years by now. Yeah, and what are some of your favorite projects that you've worked on? Whew, the one I can tell. Um, <laughs> let me think. Uh, I mean, I loved a lot the, <laughs> the car project. The car project? The car, the car, the pulley system. Yeah. You know, the, the tape pulley system? Yep. This came out from the innovation department because they, the process was a bit, okay, we got the idea of making a pulley system out of webbing instead of out of ropes. And we were like, yeah, okay, does it make sense? Is it like, and, and so we started producing the first prototype and checking them out and testing. And then eventually it was like, yeah, actually it could be cool. It can, it can become v way more compact. Than, than the current pulleys. And then we figure out, well, we can even have a system so you can release it under load, which you can't do with the normal rope pulleys. So wait a second. Oh, you're saying the car, not the car. Yes, the car. Okay, so that, that I was thinking you were talking about, because I know that uh, Edelrid makes um, the convertible roofs. Ah, no. <laughs> and those are the convertibles, and but those are made with cordage. I was like, oh, right. is the, and I was going to ask, is this where the Ka pulley system came from? The Ka is fabulous. <laughs> I love how compact it is and also when you're using mechanical advantage, mm -hmm. you want to like give it some oomph, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. that hurts when you're putting like a small cordage. So like, I think the objectives of a project like that are kind of at odds with each other, right? Like mm -hmm. make it super small and then it hurts to pull on. Whereas with the Ka, it's nice and flat. You made that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, together it was not the only person working on it, but it was mainly my project. There's a lot of different products from different vendors in that class. Uh -huh. And I think that the Ka is absolutely like the standout. It's simple, it works under load. And I also like the way when it collapses mm -hmm. and it expands, the webbing doesn't twist up. Yeah. It lays much more flat and you don't have to deal with the kind of, like when you set up a set of fours mm -hmm. where it eventually one of them has to twist around itself, yeah. which just kind of makes the whole thing want to go like this. Yes. Really, really nice project. Cool, project. thank Congratulations. you. What was, um, what was the biggest, the most frustrating and disappointing project you've worked on? Oh, in, in your time here? Um, it was a project that was called Edelblock, which was uh, based on a kind of a cool concept idea. So it's a project I inherit as a concept from the person before me, and I brought it forward and forward. And it was a very, in a way, cool, piece because there were two pieces that were stuck together and were rotating into each other so in a way it was really really cool but it was a production nightmare so actually we went on for years trying to make it work in production and eventually we gave up because it was like that's that's enough now we need to stop so was that a happy moment or a sad moment actually when at the end we said okay gone it was quite a happy moment <laughs> but Bittersweet. you know all the, the steps in between in which you get the pieces and you try to put them together it's like no again no <laughs> <laughs> i i can imagine how frustrating it must be to to let something go but also a relief yes anyways thank you for sharing this wonderful lab with us uh this is really cool technology and i think tree climbers and uh climbers of all different types and structures are really lucky to have people that are so passionate and so knowledgeable <laughs> here at Adel Ridden. Also, the unicorns. Right, yeah. of course. Thank there was you. no unicorn, by the way. You were the only one seeing it. <laughs>